quick start tutorial for RS3 version 2. In this tutorial, we will introduce many of the new and basic functions for RS3 version 2. To begin, run RS3. RS3 opens to a blank screen. To create a new model, click the New Project icon. RS3 is designed with an intuitive workflow to help guide you through the required steps in creating a model. Under each of the tabs, the toolbars and menus are customized to provide the user with functions they will need at that step of the model creation. We will begin by modifying the project settings. The project settings dialog is used to configure the main analysis parameters for your model. Click on the project settings icon. Under the units tab, set the units to metric, stresses kilopascals. Select the stages tab. Change the number of stages to 5. Name the first stage initial, the second stage excavate tunnel, the third stage excavate foundation, the fourth pour concrete foundation, and the fifth loading foundation. Next, select the groundwater tab. A major feature in RS3 is the ability to do a coupled analysis where solids and groundwater impact each other in the computation. For this tutorial, however, we are not interested in groundwater results, so set the method to none. Select the Solver Options tab. Leave the solver type as automatic to ensure accurate results. Select the Project Summary tab and enter Quick Start as the project title. Leave all other parameters at their default settings and click OK to close the dialog. Under the Geology or Excavation Workflow tabs, we can assign the materials and properties of our model. Select the Define Materials icon. Enter the following properties for Materials 1 and 2. For Material 1, enter the name Soil. Set the initial element loading to field stress and body force. Set the unit weight to 20 kN per meter cubed, then switch to Material 2. Name Material 2 Concrete. Set the initial element loading to body force only. Set the Young's modulus to 280,000 kPa, then select OK. We will now begin creating the model geometry. Ensure that the Geology Workflow tab is selected. RS3 uses the Z direction as the default direction for gravity, so keep this in mind when creating and orienting geometry. First, we will create an external box. RS3 uses an external box to act as the scope of the model, so only objects contained within or a part of the external box will be considered in the calculations. Select Geometry, Create External Box. Keep the first corner coordinates as 0, 0, 0, then change the second corner coordinates to 30, 30, negative 20. Leave Auto Expand at 0 and press OK. We will now design the excavation bodies. Select the Excavations tab from the workflow. To create our underground tunnel, we will need to define a cylinder. Select Geometry, 3D Primitive Geometry, and Cylinder. Enter the axis start point coordinates as 10, negative 1, negative 8, and axis end point coordinates to 10, 31, negative 10. It is encouraged to make objects that cut through the surface of the external box extend past the surface to ensure a clean cut through the external box. Set the radius to 1 and the number of subdivisions to 25. Click OK. Next, we will create our tank foundation using an extruded circle. Select the draw polyline icon. The Draw Polyline panel will open on the left. Select XY Plane Orientation. Set the origin to coordinate 17.5, 15, 1. Set the Path Definition to Circle and Circle Definition to Center and Radius. Set the Radius to 5. You can set the discretization settings to define the number of segments that define a circle, but we will use the default values. Set the UV coordinates to 0, 0, then press Enter, and then press the blue checkmark to close the pane. In the Visibility pane, select Polyline 1. Press Geometry, Draw Tools, and Create Polygon from Polyline. In the Create Polygons dialog, select Create Polygons to transform the polyline into Polygon 0. We must extrude the polygon into the geology to model the excavation pit and the sheet pile walls. Select Polygon 0 in the Visibility pane. Select Geometry, Extrude, Sweep, and Loft Tools, and Extrude. Keep the direction coordinates at their default values and set the depth to negative 1.5, then press OK. Now that all geometries have been defined, we can define our model. To complete the model, select Geometry, 3D Boolean, and select Divide All Geometry. Notice that all cylinder sections that extended past the external box have been omitted. We will begin staging the excavation, starting with the tunnel. Ensure that the model is active on Stage 2 by selecting the Excavate Tunnel tab. Select the Tunnel Excavation Body. In the Properties pane, change the Applied Property to No Material. 
RS3 will automatically assign the same property to all of the following stages. The foundation is excavated at stage 3, so select the Excavate Foundation Stage tab. Select the foundation body and change the applied property to No Material. The concrete is poured in stage 4, so select the Pour Concrete Foundation Stage tab. In the Properties pane, change the applied property to Concrete. Next, to edit the model's loading conditions, select the Loads Workflow tab. First, we will add a surface load. Select the Faces Selection icon and select the Foundation Surface. Select the Add Loads icon. Change the magnitude to 200 and install at the Loading Foundation stage. Leave all other parameters as their default values and click Apply. Move to Stage 5 by clicking on the Loading Foundation tab. Now, we will edit the Field Stress Loading Conditions. Select the Field Stress icon. Change the Field Stress Type to Gravity. Leave all other parameters at their default values and click OK. We now need to assign restraints to the external boundary of the model. Select the Restraints Workflow tab. R3 has a built-in Auto Restrain tool for use on underground models. Select the Auto Restrain Surface icon. This completes the construction of the model. In order to compute the results for our model, we will need to generate a mesh. Select the Mesh Workflow tab. Here we can define the mesh type and discretization density for our model. Select the Mesh Settings icon. For this tutorial, we will use a graded, 10-noted finite element mesh. Set the element type to 10-noted tetrahedral and mesh gradation to graded. Click OK. Select the mesh icon to mesh the model. Next, we will move on to the Compute Workflow tab to compute the results of our model. First, save the model by clicking File and Save. Next, save the compute file by clicking File, Save Compute File. You are now ready to compute the results. Select the Compute icon. The RS3 Compute Engine will perform the required finite element calculations. This may take a few minutes, or much longer with more complex models. Once computation is completed, the Compute dialog will close. Now, select the Results Workflow tab where we can analyze the results of our model. First, refresh the results by clicking the Refresh Results icon. The Element menu allows you to view the results for solids, bolts, or liners, while the Data Type menu allows you to view many different results. First, turn on the exterior contours by selecting the Excavation Contour icon. Select the XZ plane icon and set the center coordinates to 18, 15, negative 10. Click OK. Select the YZ plane icon and set the center coordinates to 18, 15, negative 10. Click OK. In order to compare stage results against one another, select the Contour Options icon. Select the Auto Range All Stages checkbox. Click OK. Keeping the elements as solids, select Total Displacement. Deselect the mesh in the visibility pane and cycle through stage tabs to view results. This concludes the Quick Start tutorial. Click here for more details or here for more tutorials.